Pen sacks have long been made of latex rubber, but latex sacks do have some shortcomings. Most serious is their effect on celluloid as they age. When a latex sac starts to break down, it releases sulfur compounds that permanently darken and discolor vintage plastics. These parkers from the 1930s show how dramatic the damage can be. The other issue is that many modern inks are not formulated for compatibility with older pens that use ink sacs. Premature sac failure has become increasingly common, with latex sacs sometimes dissolving into a gooey mess in a matter of weeks. Pen sacs made of silicone rubber answer both of these issues. Silicone is unaffected by the most reactive inks and will far outlast latex. It is highly stable and contains none of the compounds known to discolor vintage plastics. For both durability and preservation of original color, silicone is a sac material of choice. Yet there is one big issue with silicone sacs. Most pen sacs currently advertised as silicone aren't. The first real silicone pen sacs only came on the market at the very end of 2012. Luckily, it's easy to test a sac to see if it's really silicone. Here's how. Real silicone pen sacs have a very distinctive appearance. They have to be injection molded so they are of completely uniform thickness, including at the very tip. There are also mold lines running up the sides, which you can see more clearly as the sack is turned. Note too how this sack is nice and round with no flattened areas. Silicone strongly resists taking a set. You can leave a silicone set squashed flat for weeks and it will bounce right back. The next sack up is widely sold as silicone, but it's actually PVC. A few days in an envelope was enough to leave it permanently flattened and distorted. The material is so full of reactive plasticizers that it dissolved the writing right off the paper in which it was enclosed. That's why it looks like it's been printed on. Note that the sack is thicker at its tip, which is a giveaway that it was dip molded and not injection molded. You can see the same drip at the tip at the end of this reproduction Parker 51 sack, which is also dip molded PVC. PVC is okay for sacks that are in metal housings, but don't use PVC where the sack is in direct contact with the celluloid barrel. Over time, the PVC's plasticizer will migrate into the celluloid and can turn it soft and gooey. Silicone can withstand high heat. If it can't take the heat, it isn't silicone. Our first sample is cut from medical grade silicone tubing, the same diameter and thickness as a number 20 sac. We'll put it down in the center. Our test surface is a piece of brass sheet. Our second sample is cut from a genuine injection molded silicone sac, the same one that we examined earlier. We'll put the second sample down on the right. Our third sample is cut from the pseudo-silicone sac, the one widely sold as silicone, but to all appearances PVC. We'll put it down on the left. It's not taken very long, but the cutting on the left is already melted. The brass plate is also discolored, and I'm guessing from the chlorides being driven off from the PVC as it breaks down. The other two samples appear completely unchanged, even though they've been sitting on the plate much longer. No visible reaction with the brass plate either. The sample on the left is now charred and smoking, definitely not silicone. The hot plate surface temperature is 275 degrees centigrade or 527 degrees Fahrenheit.
If you don't have access to a Precision Lab hot plate, a simple flame test will do. First up, once again, is a cutting from the medical grade silicone tubing. The flame of an alcohol lamp is a lot hotter than our hot plate was set, but the sample is still unharmed. It's getting pretty hot though, so into the water it goes to cool down. Next up is a cutting from a real silicone sack. It's a little thinner than the medical tubing. Still, it's holding up just fine. Finally, we have a piece of the fake silicone sack. Not so good there. Once again, no doubt that it's not what it's claimed to be. Good thing the sample is small as that smoke is toxic. If you want to test your sacks, do it outdoors if you can. Burning plastic is nasty stuff.